Well, I thought we'd have a look at the clutch assembly. Um, in my either episode 9 or 10, I can't remember, I referred to it as a clutch brake. It's not a clutch brake, it's a clutch. You can't break a spindle that's got a, a screw fitting for the chuck, which is we've seen mine as. Um, so the, 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 the main elements of it, out, um, once we've taken away the outer casings, which we looked at in the previous uh, episode 9, sorry, episode 10, you've got the driven pulley, which sits on a pair of uh, ball races, and they're spinning on the shaft, which we looked at earlier. You've then got the pulley sits over this. This is uh, sitting on a spline on the drive shaft, which is that. Um, so that bit sits there, and um, the pulley's whizzing around, driven by the motor. The motor's doing 600 RPM. Uh, there might be a, a small gear change because the drive pulley on the motor is about that size and this is near enough twice the size. So there's a small reduction there. So let's say this is doing something in the region of 400 RPM. And then you come out of there and you go through the gearing on the headstock. Uh, maximum speed on this lathe 600. Lowest I think is something like 20. Might be lower than that. Shoe, uh, we don't need that. I've checked the bearings, they're in pretty good nick, not uh, well lubricated, and for all intents and purposes, they're sealed behind all this lot. So, whilst there's an oil feed to them uh, via an internal cavity in the shaft and a hole, uh, there's not a lot of chance of dirt ingress, and by the feel of them, um, they're pretty good. So, we'll stick that out of the way. Now I will at some stage have to measure the uh, internal diameter of that pulley which is what connects up with this piece. Um, the way uh, I am making this up as I go along because um, i never, never taken one apart before. The way I understand this operates, that section moves, it's on a pair of pins. One of the pins comes th travels through here. And this is the other end of that, on which is a, a basically a rack form. So as that pin moves in and out, that rack form transfers to a, a pinion gear. And the pinion gear, as it, as it's rotated, operates basically a, a limited movement cam. And that cam is what's shifting this open and closed. Now, until I've had to take that apart, I don't know how much movement there is. Um, I, I doubt there's much. Um, you know, if you said it moves 10 thou on diameter, I'd be surprised that it was that much. Um, there is an adjustment mechanism. So if you bear with me. That's the uh, plate that came off the uh, housing. So friction pulley adjustment. To adjust friction pulley, tighten the friction ring by means of circular nut. A, lock circular nut with screw B. Note for belt drive. By removing the three bolts on pulley cover, the belt openings may be varied to 12 positions. Yeah, I haven't looked at that bit. Uh, I think the belt drive means uh, like an overhead um, line shaft type thing. Um, so yeah, anyway, um, number A and, B, oh, A and B, and we've only got A, so we know that some of it's missing. So I've got to try and work out what that is. There you go. Right, I'm going to um, give this a clean off and then uh, start taking some bits off. So the mechanism for shifting that in and out is that which I'm referring to as a yoke. It's probably got a different name, but it means something to me. Um, and these little bronze shoes fit on and they ride 
inside that recess. It's pivoted on the far side uh, and the pivots are held in the uh, front end of the casing. And then this lock's connected up to uh, a lever to give a leverage action, so you got that. When I took it apart, um, these shoes, whether you can see that's not showing up brilliantly, but there's, I don't know, 100 thou wear. Uh, and look at the bloody shape of the things. The holes haven't been drilled central, that one's elongated. Um, yeah, so I figured, well, for the sake of it, I'll make up a pair of new ones. They're not a terrible fit in there, but it's quite clear that that one's been doing that. So uh, that was where I left off the previous video. Um, I cut myself some blanks. Um, these are going to fit in there. There's, a, I think it's between five and six thou clearance on it. That, that collar's uh, slightly tapered. Now I could put it in the lathe and bring it back to parallel, but I'll be honest, I don't think it's worth it. You can see I've left material here. What I'm actually going to do is scoop out the inside of that so that they seat better, which will give me a bigger surface area here than they had. Yeah. So that's one of the jobs today, is get them scooped out and then uh, drill the holes so that they're a nice sliding fit on the yoke. Um, and then as I say, I'll start stripping this down, cleaning it up and find out uh, what's the joke, find out what's a foot. There's a full shape lingam on the end of your leg. We won't do any more Monty Python sketches for a while, much as I like the guy. It's... Right. Big idea of already taking this off. Once. And it didn't relieve any, didn't didn't show anything. No, it's just a retaining ring. that out. So the clutch wasn't operative um, when I got the lathe. It was permanently engaged. Now, I don't know whether that had been set like that because they buggered about and couldn't work out what to do. So that's like a nut. As you can. So it's literally just going from those across the flats, and as you turn it, it opens it out. So that's that's the degree of movement, the difference in diameter from there to there, and that's around there. I would have thought that that lot will come off. There we go. You can only go back the right way round so that that's that end. Not a lot to it then, is it? Could do a marking that so we know which which 
way round it went. No, same thing again, that can only go round one way round. And they're the little followers and they're just, they must be just some of the hard, hardened uh, steel. Well, that's an interesting uh, um, method of taking up the the wear, if you like. So that little shoe, it's got a taper on it, a wedge on it, and that wedge is driven in and out. By a corresponding wedge down there. You see that? Sorry, the lighting's shit. That's not helped at all. <laughs> I'll get you some close up photo. photos. Let's see if we can pook it out. There's a little tiny key in there. It's a pin that's driven through. Just about see a witness line there for it. And that's locating there. And that holds the wedge at the right angle. Always pays to have a good look at something when you're cleaning it up. Well, before I took this off, I was fairly confident this bit was hardened, but it's not, it's just cast iron. Um, I need to understand what's marking this up in relation to what it's in contact with from my understanding there's nothing running on that but uh, I'll have to have another look anyway the rest of it I've just cleaned off a bit of gunk from the back face of this it's uh, smooth there's nothing there's only this section which is in contact and it's not actually a, a bearing face it's just, it, it has been machined and that's just the old machine face. It's just got some rust on it. Yep. Keep going. I want to uh, measure the diameter of the uh, uh, moving part in the clutch, uh, the friction part. Uh, so a degree of rever reverence whilst we open the large micrometer box. So I bought this um, off eBay it looked reasonably tidy uh, it was listed as a more and right um, it isn't um, somebody's obviously put quite a bit of work into cleaning it all up the box has all been repainted or resprayed uh, it's actually a starret um, I don't know what the number is but it's a UK made starret uh, mic and I think from memory it's 6 to 12 inches I only used it once and it was only when I last used it that I realised it wasn't the more and right as advertised <laughs> not that that's a problem um, there's no marking it's always been sprayed over whatever was there anyway uh, so we need something in the region of 7 inches uh, the only problem with using this thing is it's a little bit cumbersome um, and it takes me couple of dozen attempts to get a consistent reading but my uh, dedicated mics finish at se seven inch, not six to seven inch I haven't got a seven to eight so I'll uh, swing the camera around and we'll try and get a dimension I'll just clamp the ring in the uh, vice one less thing to hold as I say the hard, the hard bit with this is just getting the whole thing uh, into a position where you can get a consistent reading in a really nice um, 
well, no, that's a lie. I've seen a tatty and yet perfectly functioning metric set of um, micrometers. I think 50 mil up to, or no, no, naught all the way up to, I think, 350, the 14 inch. That is seven three five seven. perfectly round but I wouldn't have expected it to be I mean I would expect that the when that is expanded the movement is going to be on this top half so the diameter there would be different to the diameter there now anyway, what we're going to do now is measure the diameter of the uh, idea of the mating face and see where they're at. So that's the uh, idea which I've cleaned out. Quite oily. Um, because it's got the centre boss in there, I can't use a telescoping gauge. Um, I can't use an internal mic. And I, whilst I have a pair of calipers which would reach across, uh, I've got to dig them out and it's too much aggro. So we're using a pair of stiff leg um, calipers. We've set them so that they. Uh, I can just hear that moving on it and just feel it. There's no side to side movement. And then measuring that on the um, micrometer that we've just had out, we've got a figure of the idea of this 387 and the OD of the mating piece at its widest. 365 which gives me 24 thou um let's call it running clearance in its relaxed state so i need to measure up a few more things and just find out how much it expands to on movement um but the other way i drop that in there you can see it There's a bit of movement, but there has to be anyway for it to work. So uh, I've got to work out now how much expansion it come, it, it gives, and then uh, take it from there. I waffle on. So measuring the uh, the calipers which was set now, and I'm, I am literally just bringing it in until I can start to feel it. And you can also hear it. And you can read, take a reading off it. And you repeat it several times to make sure you've not cocked it up. Jobs are good. It's a bit crude how I've got it rigged up, but it's just to check for the overall expansion. So um, I've reassembled it. This is the expanding section there. There's the cam, cam followers. That's the yoga. Um, I've now close that down which pushes it rotates the cam and it's gone past the flats and onto the OD and I've stuck the micrometer over this and we've got 50 thou of expansion so there's more than enough for uh, clamping it so I'll take it all apart now strip it down clean up any burrs or anything lubricate it put it back together Jobs are good. So we put it back, cleaned it all down, um, put some more lubrication on, just light up a bit of light machine oil on the moving faces, except this one. Um, what we, what I've discovered is there should be a, more for want of a better phrase, a grub screw with a long thin pointy end which goes down there and secures the um, cam, as at the moment. 
there's now it stops up going in and out and you can see it's got a groove I've uh, actually gone back through and checked the footage and it, I didn't take it out so I know it wasn't in there and then the locking screw for this so I've got to determine what they are and then uh, see if I can get something suitable otherwise I'm making up bloody screw fixings it, somebody's been into it before and not done a particularly good job uh, looking at it anyway we mustn't judge just uh, grinding up a tool for the uh, um, oil line grooves on the inside of the bushings um, this was a little tiny gauge came in a pack which I honestly thought I'd never find useful but they came in the uh, what's in your box uh, from Keith Fenner anyway I'm um, wanting to see how my tool grind is coming on by hand um, so that is what 364 that radius That's not bloody far off, is it? So I've just got to uh, hone the top of it. I've done the sides. Again, you can't. And then uh, I've got to cut around the uh, either end of the bearing before we uh, Chris gets his hammer and chisel out. <laughs> Which, hmm. It's not neat actually at the moment. I've never seen it done. It's a bit spirally. Oh, I'm expecting perfect pitch. Oh, I see, yeah. You're going to be disappointed. <laughs> and bronze is the worst thing. You oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Here's my wooden leg. I'd have run faster, but for my wooden leg. But whereas, <laughs> cast iron cuts <laughs> beautifully. Yeah, 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 yeah. That is the end of a round file that's been dressed square, yeah? Yeah, but the thing was, it was a file with a plain section on it. Yeah, I'm with That's yeah. what I was looking for. Yeah. Because you can, if you haven't, you can you can grind... Yeah, you can take, uh, the, take the teeth off the end yeah, of Yeah, yeah. But, they can't do that. I think it's an old file, then. But, I finish it with a file anyway. Yeah. At your moment, you're just roughing out the material, aren't you? Yeah. I've had a chisel in it, and um, but, but I'll probably finish it with this piece now. When that goes into the socket that it fixes into, does it matter which orientation that grooves up? Bottom, top, left, right. No. What what I would do? Yeah. What I would do is, I would have the spiral one at the top. Right. Man, as it happens, it's not fed on the top at all. This. Is no, it? it's fed from the middle. 
Yeah, so no, it doesn't matter. Right. I've got a straight one in there. So I'm just uh, setting up to re-pull the bearing sleeves into place. So we've got the collar which is a spacer to span the gap and press around the outside of the whole locking nut so that I can hold the shaft and stop the shaft spinning. Uh, the the um, adapter which fits down the middle of the uh, sleeve and puts the pressure on the outside of the sleeve and then the pressure nut. Uh, and it, it's a bit tight because uh, I've got to hold the span on one end and one at the other, so it takes a bit of time. But I'll set you up in the sky hooks and show you. Now I duplicated the sizing on the uh, bearing to match the original one. Let's take the slack out. And it's a two thou interference fit. No great deal of pressure required. That's it. Probably not as exciting as a big hydraulic press, but I tend to uh, quite like that method. Goes in a lot easier than it comes out, I have to say. So that's the top up bush. It just helps keep the, the bearing square and the uh, clamping nut down the middle. Could probably come through a little bit more. pair of steel discs that fit one there and one on the inside so the end face of the bearing isn't doing anything and I've, I've left it proud here because I'm thinking it's probably better than rubbing on the cast but the cast is witnessed so I'll just squeeze up through a little bit further, it's got another probably ten thou, and then we're done. So there's a pair of these. Uh, they're like a, a wear shim, I assume, or a, they're hardened steel anyway, and they're set up with a 
decent oil groove all around them. Um, and they sit either side of the flange, so one on the inside, one on the outside. Um, I'll just take you out the hook, so you'll see. So one of them sits, this is goes to the inside of that uh, flange. So it's sitting on there and running on there. All I've done is I've rubbed them round on a diamond lap. Uh, there was some um, galling going on, showing lack of lube. They're not brilliant. I'm actually wondering now whether my time might be better spent digging out the surface grinder. And the degree of wear is a couple of tenths kind of thing. It's a witness more than anything. Um, the galling was not very deep, but uh, a bit there and there. So yeah, I'm just wondering whether to actually set up the um, surface grinder and give it give it a lick over, um, and then I've got to have a look to see how that, that is actually lubricated. Um, the other side is where that uh, the spur wheel spur gear fits. So that's running in, in the headstock on on the other underside, and we know that oil's dribbling down the end of that, and we know that it's coming out hole in the head in the gear there and also out that hole or it should be so that's lubricating the, the bushing um, and I'm assuming because I can't see any other facility for oiling anywhere else down that area that it's then reliant upon the overspill of oil from here to lubricate that face and to the face of those by that pair of holes but then that doesn't explain how that one gets lubricated. So we are. There's nothing coming off the... Uh, I mean, all the holes are lining up. There's nothing in this area. So, don't know. Maybe that's why they're a hardened plate, so they don't need it as much but quite clearly there was some as I say there was some galling on one of them you can just see the remnants of it there yeah I waffle on I'll have to much buggering about well I think I've pretty much identified what these two uh, threads are uh, they were both full of crap so getting a tap down has not been easy but this one I was convinced was a seven Thirty second, I think it was. Anyway, um, having purchased a <laughs> set of taps and dies, it ain't. I've cleaned it all out, and it's actually a quarter BSF, or that's as near as I can find it. Um, this one couldn't get anything down it, and it's tapped right down at the very bottom. And uh, what I've ended up putting down it. And it screws in fine. Is a three BA, which makes me wonder whether that was naught BA, because that's very close to a quarter BSF. So yeah, oh, it's not going to focus on that. Yeah, tiny little things, but it just seems odd that uh, this thing's got BA as well as BSF. So I'm going to have one of these out and just check the thread on those because it might all be BA and I might have cross-threaded that but uh, it threads in alright. It's only a pretty thread but uh, it is only for a retaining pin. Uh, I've just got the three on the back to check now see what they are. Uh, I've asked the question on the Holbrook Owners forum on Yahoo if anybody can shed any light as to what these holes are on the back. Um, so far nothing one suggestion was there might be jacking screws for getting that out um, which I could yeah possibly it did just seem a little bit thin a little bit thin for that anyway going to do some more investigating and then I've got to start making up some fixings so that's the uh, thread and the pin made up to retain that B 
bit long at the minute, might need cut it down. And then I've got to cut the uh, slot for a screwdriver in the end. If it goes in, it's a nice fit and the pin's retained. Hoorah! Right, so that's that one fitted. Um, next one is this locking screw. Um, basically, as you wind that one down, it's pushing the cam follower over so that the cam has to rotate less for the same amount of a open and closing and having adjusted it you then lock it with this fixing all of which I have determined from that so to adjust friction poorly tighten the friction ring by means of circular nut A as demonstrated uh, uh, lock the circular nut with screw B now they've kindly put as a cross-sectional drawing on how the hell does this one lock that one it do look like it's on a shoulder so I'm gonna have that out again and see what I can uh, determine all right so it's a it's a 3 8 diameter flat bottomed screw and that diameter locks down on that um, shoulder uh, that being a, a nut as you wind that clockwise it pulls up that which shoves everything that way so by clumping it down you're going in the opposite way to the thread so that would work yeah all right so we just need to make up basically 3BA up to a flat shoulder to make sure the shoulder's 3 8 put a cross hatch in it screw shoulder Looking for 162. So half a thou up that don't think that'll be a problem. Yeah. Good to go. The uh, materials 01 tool steel or drill rod. Um, not that I'm gonna harden it, it's just that it's a decent quality steel. To make and fix it out of. Just let the bumblebee go. So that's that one cleaned up and done. filed that one well hacksawed it and filed it but uh, thought I'd try something different on that one right well I've had a couple of replies from uh, 
the Yahoo group about the three holes on the rear of that and the consensus seems to be it's a jacking the jacking points for pushing that off if it's on a bit snug so they can stay empty and leave them so which I think basically leaves that now ready to go back together well, I'm just tweaking up the uh, bearing sleeves on this I've resolved the issue with the thread on that the actual uh, oiler threads are pretty well chewed up so I've cleaned them out and uh, tied them up with a file uh, I'm actually going to replace them with a slightly bigger oiler uh, I had then another issue um, not sure how I arrived at it but I'd made that collar there um, 80 thou too long so I've actually pulled the bearing out machined the inside face of the collar away and then pushed it back in I then found out that I hadn't actually machined enough off the diameter so in pushing it back in it's shrunk the ID so I've just been fitting it so that it spins free still wants a bit more work but it's uh, there's no play in it now um, the fitted dry so I'm not spinning it too much um, yeah so that's getting on for being ready to bit rebuild them I've got to finish off the shoes that sit on the yoke and make sure that all fits that's built up and ready to go um, so yeah a bit more cocking about with bits of bronze and then basically put it all together and this needs a top coat and that is about it well just for finish machining the, uh, the replacements for these which were the shoes that go in the clutch um, I don't know what you call that, yoke or actuator. Can't find the other one. Um, let's see if you can't see that very well. You can see the wear on the original. What I was trying to do was make them more of a horseshoe shape so they wrap around more. Um, however, when it comes to assembling the thing, there's no float that way beyond, I think it's about an eighth of an inch. So. I can't come down below the centre on one side, so I've made them slightly offset. Um, so they're like that. They're a lot better than they were. Uh, they're not. They're not as good as I wanted them, but uh, they will do the job. So I just got to go around and deburr them around the edges, and then. Uh, that's the next bit done. I think that's about it on the clutch for, for rebuilding it. Um, somebody asked the question, was there a break with this? And there isn't, as best I can see. The only way of, um, my understanding of how it's operating, if you disengage it and take it past that disengaged position, you're basically forcing this assembly onto the back of this hardened plate onto the cast frame that goes that side and in the process of doing that also pushing the gear into the receiving gear of the headstock um, which doesn't seem appropriate so no I don't think there is a brake on it uh, I think it relies on the friction through and the gear in through the headstock to slow it all down which would make sense it's nice to see the stone walls being maintained these are all new stones being put back up this year they're part of what makes this landscape unique to the rest of the UK mainly because of the geology and therefore the rocks are coming out There's a population of a couple of hundred red deer in, in amongst this forest area. 
you don't see them much in the daytime very rarely but because uh, the cover's so thick winter time you tend to pick them up as they're on this uh, these grassier bits grazing I'm out of breath. So these are called wind gather rocks. It's about a quarter of a mile ridge. It's quite, if that's vertical, it's not particularly steep. And the combination of which make it a perfect place for um, climbers learning the, the trade. So on a weekday, uh, sorry, on a weekend morning, there's a uh, rope slung down and young, young folk and old folk alike. We crash mats down and they're all scrabbling over the rocks. It's quite a good hand holds, it's quite a grippy rock. It's a nice part of the world. So you can just about see the profile on that ridge. Right, it goes along and then there's a dip. Same on this one, it dips on the other side. And that's the edge of the grit stone. This edge here, after that you drop into the Chester Plain. Cheshire Plain. I can't quite see it, but just over that ridge, you've got um, one of the first radio telescopes, a place called Jodrell Bank. On a clear day, you can see the uh, telescope. And if you watch very slowly, you can see it rotating. I love it up here when there's had a good dump of snow. Get some uh, lovely landscape phot photography. And as you might be able to hear, we're on the flight path for Manchester Airport, which is out of view in the fog or mist. That's the largest face, that's about 45 feet, a little bit more steep. And they do a lot of abseiling off it as a training exercise. The dog was sat on top for scale. <laughs> so that's uh, update for this week. Um, a lot of painting, a lot of cocking about, machining things to find tolerances and then um, fitting them later. Um, I can't really build the clutch up because uh, it makes it too heavy to lift up into place to then bolt it onto the headstock. So I'll probably build it up once the headstock's on. An update um, on sort of the, the, the Patreon and the subscriber support. The subscriber base is growing nicely. Um, not perhaps as fast as I'd like, but... Uh, I'm adding 25, 30 a month, which is great. Uh, the more you guys can do to share and point people at the videos, the better, because it all helps. Um, the I've got one Patreon. Thank you very much. I shall be dropping you a line in the next day or so. Um, I've got a couple of guys that have um, supported me via the PayPal donations, uh, which is great. Um, they've made a huge difference, and I'm... I think I'm 75% of the way towards getting the uh, TIG system sorted out. Um, it's my birthday next week, so uh, I'll probably make up the balance and that'll be my birthday treat for this year. Uh, other than that, um, yeah, let's just keep, keep chipping away at this. Um, once the clutch is out of the way, whilst I've uh, got a bit of time, I might uh, have a tidy up in here and make a bit of space. And then the next job's to bring in the... Uh, it's either going to be the gearbox or the saddle assembly. Um, not sure which I'm going to do first. Um, both of which are in a pretty poor state uh, in terms of covered in crap and rust and whatnot. But I really do need some space to clear them. Um, having had a quick look at the gearbox, there's lots of bits. So, uh, yeah. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. And uh, try and get some up next week. Cheers all.